10 July 1943, the U.S. 7th Army, tempered to steely hardness in the blazing African deserts, now invades Sicily, onto its beaches and into the mountain strongholds of Mussolini and Hitler, milestones on the road to Rome and Berlin. The Allied troops were relentlessly moving forward, getting pushed back, moving on again. The American citizen soldiers were enduring a desperate struggle, all of which was maintained by a belief in their cause, a faith in those they left behind. Mothers, fathers, wives and sweethearts, and a trust in those who helped them in their hour of need. And so it was, one citizen soldier helping another through the pain and uncertainty and through the loneliness that only the wounded can know. Two such people were registered nurse Nancy Howard and her fiancé, veteran Army Lieutenant Hank Reed. This is their story. All of which means we'll have to change our wedding plans. We can get married right away. Darling, I love you dearly. And I want so much to be your wife. But with time so short, it will be best that we wait until all of this miserableness is over. Then we can start in with dignity. Nancy, please. There's absolutely no reason why we can't be married right away. Uh, our families would understand. I have a surprise for you. What's this? Read it. Congress of the United States hereby approves the commission of second lieutenant. How could you do a thing like that? Why, Hank, I thought you would be proud of me. It's enough that my wife wants to work, but now this, in the army. I want my wife to stay at home, and where she belongs. I want her to make a home, a place that you want to go to after a long, hard day. And who knows, maybe someday even children. Hank Reed, you will listen to me. First, I'm not your wife. We have no kids, no home, no immediate prospect for any of that. Second, I will not have you sit there ordering me around as if I were a subordinate. Some things just can't be done when there's a war on. Okay, okay, calm down. I wasn't ordering you around. I was just thinking how nice. Just Hope thinking. you were. And I tried so hard to please you. Look, uh, isn't it enough that there's one of us in the service? Uh, what's the difference as long as you're a nurse? Why do you refuse to understand? Our country is at war, and I can contribute something to its success as an army nurse. I feel it's my duty to do it. Possibly so. But I was just thinking, war is not a pretty business. It can make you hard. It can make you bitter. I don't want that to happen to you. Oh, yes. I love the army. What part of the country are you from? My home is in Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. We're Pennsylvania Dutch. I thought your speech had a familiar ring. We examined your Keystone boys and completed their shots. The 28th Division was here before they were shipped out. Yes, Major, I know. I have a very personal interest in the 28th. Brother? No, my fiancé. Is your man overseas yet? Yes, he's a lieutenant for the 28th. To which theater was he sent? I don't know. I can't tell from his letters. Well, in any case, I welcome you to Camp Pickett. Thank you, Major. In view of our medical rather than military background, while we're in the hospital, we find it easier to address each other as doctor and nurse. Yes, doctor. Our head nurse, Captain West, will take care of you. You check in with her. Yes, doctor. Just fine. You'll have a good night. Hurts, that hurts. I'm sorry, but you have to have that traction on your leg. Now, tomorrow I want you to exercise that arm on this here. I'll show you how. Nancy's hours were long and hard. She, like thousands of others, worked where she was most needed, checking temperatures and pulses, assisting in the operating rooms, and giving new hope to those who had lost so much. Well, 
Hello, I haven't seen you for quite some time. Are they keeping you busy? More than I ever was as a civilian nurse. And you're doing very well, too. I've heard excellent reports from all the doctors you've worked with. It was very nice of them to say so. They've taught me a great deal. I'm very proud of our staff. I think they're all good men. And we're all glad to have you with us. Uh, by the way, how's your lieutenant, the boy you're going to marry? Oh, from his letters, he's in good health, but I still don't know where he is. This might sound silly, but somehow it would help knowing. I'm not saying that this will do you any good, but Chaplain Martin is on the post. He's been assigned to the 28th. I don't believe he's leaving until tomorrow. Thank you very much, Doctor. Good luck, nurse. You're very kind. Glad you came. Indeed I did know Lieutenant Reed. A fine young man. I went through training with him. Louisiana, Georgia, Florida. Hank said some of it was pretty hard. For an old man like me, it was all hard. <laughs> I believe he showed me a picture of you, but it was in civilian nurse's uniform. It wasn't a very good picture of me. I had a silly grin. As I remember, he told me you were much prettier in person, and you are. He also said you were engaged. I almost had him on the church steps when he was called away. Now we have to wait until the war is over. Well, Nancy, uh, I may be seeing Lieutenant Reed within the next few days. Is there any message that you want me to give him? What I have to tell him, Chaplain, is just as personal as breathing. No one can do it for me. Then what is it you're trying to ask me? Well, I thought maybe you... Can't you get any idea where he is from his letters? He doesn't give me a clue in them. I guess I'm selfish. Have patience, Nancy. Within a very short period of time, he'll be permitted to tell you where he is in his letters. I'm sorry. Dr. Jackson told me you were going to join them. I had to speak to you. I understand. Knowing that you will be seeing him and speaking to him soon is comforting. And, and I feel better. You sure you don't want me to give him a message? I'd be happy to. He knows I love him. Unfortunately, only I can tell him how much. Just say, do your job. Do it well. And hurry home. Thank you, Chaplain, and goodbye. Perhaps we meet again soon. We shall, I'm sure. Good morning, Doctor. You sent for me? Yes, I did. Please sit down. Thank you. I have a problem. I thought you could help me solve it. I'd be glad to be of any help, Doctor. Dr. Berry tells me that you've been assisting him in some very difficult operations. He also tells me you're an excellent surgical nurse. That was very kind of Dr. Berry. When we find people with superior skill, we like to keep them with us. But in the army, that's not always possible. Is anything wrong, Doctor? I don't know. I presume you spoke to Chaplain Martin before he left. Yes, Doctor, I did. And did you find out anything? No. Nothing. And I'm sorry I put the chaplain in the awkward position of bluntly asking him. I'm sure he'll understand. Why don't you put in for overseas duty? I've had two requests for you from other doctors. Other overseas applications keep coming in, and I always look through them with uh, some apprehension, thinking I might find yours. Therefore, I thought I'd ask. Yes, I do want overseas duty, but right now I can't put in for it. I'll serve where I'm most needed. Which would you prefer? Europe, Pacific, it might help if you made a specific request. But I haven't made a request. Doctor, you know where Hank is. Not officially, of course. But I've been looking through these records of their shot series. Do you find any cholera shots there? Europe. Transfers take a long time, but I'll forward yours immediately and recommend its approval. Uh, did you say Europe? Dr. Jackson, I, I... I really don't know how to... You don't have to say anything. And don't mistake me, nurse. I'm not a romanticist. I happen to know that our work is greatly needed over there. My own request for transfer to overseas duty has been in for three months. That is all, nurse. Get 
Oh, you need some of Get out of the truck. Anyway, stop. Order. Anyway, stop. I... Lieutenant, uh, just flown in from the front. Well, do you have a list of names? Uh, sir, I gave the other nurse a copy. You don't have a copy? Uh, sure. The pilot gave me a... Here's all of them. Mm-hmm. I have the first seven. The others are coming in. Thank you. Careful, watch it. That's all right. I'll take care of that. Colonel Bear wishes to see you in his office right away. You sent for me, Colonel Bear. Lieutenant Howard, uh, I have here a formal request from a frontline doctor asking that you be transferred to his unit. This comes as a surprise to me, Colonel. This is not the first request. I don't understand. What I want you to understand, Lieutenant, is that the Medical Corps is a very different organization from civilian medicine. In addition to professional ethics, there is also discipline. The discipline required by the military side of this hospital. I understand that, sir. The Medical Corps isn't as flexible as civilian life. You can't pick your assignment or the place where you'd like best to work. I did not ask anybody to request me, sir. It's my duty to serve wherever the Army sends me. That's what I was hoping you would answer. I had nothing to do with these requests, Colonel. Nothing at all. I believe you, Lieutenant. It's just that I must know where I stand in reference to my staff at all times. Thank you, Lieutenant. That'll be all. New to this ward, but I've been in England long enough to know that you're Private John Kelly, 109th Infantry, Company B. Oh, no, you're not going to start stabbing my leg for some more shrapnel. Of course not. This call's purely social. Yeah, well, that's more to my liking. I was... Uh-uh, uh, for the time being, I guess we'll just have to talk. Till I get out of here. Uh, where are you from? Same place you are, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. How's that for luck? To tell you the truth, Kelly, it wasn't all luck. I found the information on you in the hospital records. I've been trying to catch up with you fellows for a long time. No, you've already got a guy in our outfit, huh? Mm, sure have. Lieutenant Hank Reed. Know him? Do I know him? He's my platoon leader. Oh. He dragged me to cover when I got this. So you've got a great guy there. He sure is. How is he? Oh, great. Just great. He's giving those Germans a hard time, too. Uh, when did you see him last? About a week ago. The Hill 288, just beyond Gothamo. Oh, they must be almost to Germany by now. Well, no, not exactly. Uh, every hedgerow over there gets a little tougher and a little slower. The Germans are really throwing stuff at our boys. Lieutenant, Colonel Blair wishes to see you in his office right away. Thank you, Captain. 
Thanks for the news, Kitty. You don't have to thank me. It's a pleasure talking about that guy of yours. <laughs> Say, does he know you're over here? Yes, he does. I'll be in to see you again. Sit down, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. I have here another emphatic letter requesting your transfer. Oh, no, not again. Yes, in effect, it states that your special qualifications are desperately needed for field duty. But, sir, every nurse is qualified for field duty. I know that. Nevertheless, Nancy, we have here before us a request for your transfer. Now, it seems that uh, you were working in surgery with... Hello, uh, Nancy. How's that Keystone boyfriend of yours? Major Jackson! Am I ever glad to see you. You didn't answer my question. Oh, Hank, well, he's fine. The last I heard... You! Uh, Lieutenant, do you want this assignment? Yes, sir. We haven't got all day. Okay, Lieutenant, start packing. Yes, sir. Uh, Nancy. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Well, Bruce, you certainly pulled one on me this time with that special qualifications bit. of the 28th with your convoy? No, Lieutenant. The entire 28th moved out two days ago. Oh, thanks. Say, Lieutenant, we're joining the 28th. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm looking for Lieutenant Hank Reed of Company B. Well, I might bump into him. Who shall I say came all the way up here to see him? Thanks. Never mind. brings you to this area? I just arrived a minute ago. How have you been? Oh, fine. You were a front, weren't you? Yes. I still am. How soon can I see Dr. Jackson? He'll be out of surgery in a minute now. He's just finishing up. Nurse. Nurse. Who's the commanding officer? Major Jackson. Where is he? In there. You can't go in there. He has surgery. Well, he'd better get ready for a lot more. Yes, with Dr. Jackson. The Germans are coming. They broke through the line. The whole Nazi army's in his way. Marbach. Marbach? 
109th Infantry? The whole 1st Battalion has been wiped out. They'll be coming in any minute. It's awful. Nurse! We better get ready. They're going to need us. Sending four critical patients back to General Hospital. I want you to go with them. Doctor, naturally I'd like to go with Hank, but I know how badly you need me here. Thanks, nurse. But darling, that's all the leave I could get. I have to go back today. You can't go back yet. And that's final. Just think someday we can tell our children we've been in Europe together. And we weren't even married. Yeah. And we saw it all from a hospital. You get permission? Better than that. You're flying back to the States today. But I can't go back now. Oh, yes, you can. Orders. And Dr. Jackson is a genius. And as for you, young lady, here are your orders. You're assigned as flight nurse on the plane for reassignment in the States. Well, I can't keep Dr. Jackson waiting. Happy landings, kids. Since the beginning of American history, women have helped to nurse the ill and the wounded, even on the field of battle. Wherever duty calls the American fighting man, it also calls the Army nurse. <laughs> 